Okay, so well, lots of people joined, so I think we, we can start now. So as you already know, our today's topic is managing production grade MariaDB in Kubernetes using KubeDB. And Alif is the engineer who is going to cover this topic for us today. Alif is one of the engineers who's been involved in various kinds of Kubernetes projects since 2020, and he is very enthusiastic about it. So uh, we'll have Alif talk about on this topic. But before starting, let me tell you that if you have any question and answer, please feel free to ask in Zoom chat. We'll be answering your questions after the presentation and demo is over. So Alif, uh, think you can start now? Alif, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, hello everyone. I am Andy Alif Bishash, software engineer at AppScot. So today's webinar is about managing production grade MariaDB in Kubernetes using KubeDB. So uh, here is the table of content uh, of today's webinar. So at first we'll talk about what makes a database safe and reliable to run in production. And then we'll discuss uh, what KubeDB Managed MariaDB offers. And then we will show a live demonstration where we'll talk about some key KubeDB features. And at the last part of this webinar, we'll perform a Q&A session. So let's jump into the webinar. Uh, so what makes the database safe and reliable to run in the production? So the first thing uh, we expect from a database is high availability. So in KubeDB, uh, for a database, if it provides clustering and failover, then we can say that it's highly available. And then uh, for a database server, we expect it is TLS secure. So that provides security to the database. And the database should be, uh, upgradable to the new versions. And uh, if uh, based on the uh, traffic, the database should be scalable in horizontal or vertical way. And the last, uh, uh, the database should be uh, re recoverable from any disaster case. So for that reason, uh, we need backup and restore for the database. So next, uh, what we are offering in KubeDB. Uh, in the MariaDB database. So here are the features. And the first uh, first feature is we offer clustering in KubeDB. Uh, in MariaDB, we, of, we offer multi-master cluster. That means you can uh, do a read or write in any node. And then we are offering automatic failover for partial or full crash. Uh, if one or some of the nodes get crashed, uh, so it will uh, recover automatically. And uh, using Stash, we can backup or restore the database. And uh, for TLS, uh, we can add, remove, update, or rotate the database uh, TLS configuration using Cert Manager. And uh, uh, the automated version upgrade is also supported in KubeDB. Automated horizontal and vertical scaling is also supported. And reconfiguring the reconfiguration of the database, uh, KubeDB provides reconfiguration of the database with add, update, and remove feature. And lastly, uh, KubeDB also provides volume expansion. So these are the features we are offering in KubeDB. Uh, so let's jump into the live demo. So now I am sharing my workstation with you. Uh, we are watching three resources. One is the pods in the demo namespace. We will work everything on our demo namespace. And the second, we are watching the MariaDB custom resource that is provided by KubeDB. And thirdly, we are watching MariaDB Ops request resource that is also provided by the KubeDB. So uh, let me show you uh, my uh, workstation. So I am using Kind for Kubernetes cluster. So uh, let's see what's the version of Kind I'm using here. That's the version uh, 0 0.11.1. And the kubectl version for the server site is here 1.21.1. Uh, I have also installed two Helm chart. Uh, uh, if I list here, you can see this. Uh, the first one is KubeDB, and the second one is Stash. We have also installed Start Manager for TLS support in our database. Uh, so at first, we will deploy a TLS secure MariaDB database cluster uh, in this demo. So at first, we have to create a secret containing CA cert and CA key. We have already uh, created the CSR and CA key in this directory. So I will create, just create the secret here. The secret name is MDCA. Oh, at first we have to create the namespace. Okay. 
So we have created the secret and now we'll deploy the database that is in sample MariaDB YAML. So I'm going to apply this YAML and uh, the database is in provisioning state. Oh, sorry, uh, I missed a point. I have to create the issuer uh, for creating the database. So I'm going to apply the issuer. So the issuer is created. Uh, if I take a look in the YAML of the issuer, I can see that uh, the this issuer resource is provided by the cert manager, uh, the kind is issuer. And we also uh, mentioned the secret name we are using for issuing the certificates. Uh, so this is the YAML of issuer and also we have applied the sample MariaDB object. So this is the sample MariaDB. Uh, this is the kind of MariaDB uh, provided by KubeDB. And in the metadata, we have mentioned the name and namespace. In the spec, we can see that the version is 10.4.17 MariaDB version, and we are creating a cluster of three nodes. And here the storage type is durable. That means we are using PVC for the databases. If we used ephemeral, then we, are, we will be using uh, empty directory. And the, in the storage section, we have mentioned uh, the how many storage we are requesting to the cluster and what is the storage class name and these features. And in the termination policy, we are using the wipeout. If you want to know more about the termination policy, you can check out documentations. And we, as we are using TLS, so we have to tell the database so which one is the issuer, which one will be the issuer for this database. So here, this is the MD issuer we have created just before. So let's take a look what is happening here. So uh, this database is in provisioning state. We can see that we have created three ports. So the three ports are running, but the database is in provisioning state. Now it's ready. So it is now ready to take some query and insert some data. So now we will insert some data into our database. So for inserting some data, we have to exec into the database. I'm going to exec into the first port and I'm going to connect to the MySQL uh, MariaDB server using this common MySQL password and user. So now I want to create a database named company. And I also create a table that is named employees. Sorry. Now I will insert two rows in this uh, in this table. So let's check out the data. Uh, as you can see, we have two rows in the database. So now we will uh, check uh, how this database react to the class uh, failover. Now I'm going to manually delete one port and see what happened next. So I'm going to delete the first port in the database. So the first port is in terminating state. So whenever we delete one or two ports, at least there is one port alive, then the deleted port will try to find the alive port, uh, running port and join the cluster. If there is at least one port alive, then it will, uh, it has the cluster. So it will try to join that cluster. So we are simulating that case where one port is deleted. So if we are going to check the cluster size in this situation, okay, port zero is now dead. So we are going to exit into port one and exit into the server. And if we check the cluster size of this database, we can see there are two ports, two members running here. The cluster size is two. But after some time when uh, the deleted port can join the cluster, it will it will bring it will show us three members in the cluster so the database is in critical state when it is ready then we can say that uh, the, the all the ports are running so we will wait some moment till the database can critical uh, to ready status okay the database is in ready state and if we plus uh, check the cluster size we can see the there are three members in the cluster. So 
this is the partial failover case but if we want to simulate the full cluster failover then we have to delete all the ports so we as we have three ports we are going to delete all of them simultaneously uh, in the same time so i have deleted all three ports and all of them are in terminating state so kubedb operator will recreate the ports as we are, we are using state reset so let's wait for a while whenever we delete all the ports and there is no primary member to join then each of the ports communicate with other ports and uh, after a while it try to it, it makes sure that there is no port uh, online with doing some retries then uh, it try to run a sequence number uh, it try to uh, calculate the sequence number of the current node so whoever gets the whoever gets the max sequence number will be our will be the first port to bootstrap the cluster so there in that case there no data loss will happen so it will take some moment because they are communicating with each other and figuring out the sequence number we can still exec into the ports and but if we try to connect to the mysql server it will decline because no server has started yet it, it, it will first select the first node to bootstrap and then the rest of the nodes will join so we have to wait one or two minutes okay the first node is online and hopefully the rest of the nodes will also join the cluster soon uh, let's check what's the cluster size means how many nodes have joined the cluster uh, actually we have three nodes and the database is in ready state uh, let's check out if the data are safe or not well uh, all that are safe after the full crash of the database it recovered from the crash so next we, we will demonstrate about version update uh, for version update we are using ops request uh, version uh, upgrade ops request so i am going to upgrade the version to 10.5.8 my ready version 10.5.8 so let's check the current version here so we are currently using 10.4.17 so I am going to apply the version upgrade of request.
and let's take a look at the version update of request yaml so this is the version update yaml file the the kind of this resource is mariadb of request this is provided by qdb uh, in the metadata we are providing the name and namespace so the request name is my md version update uh, the type of this request is update and we have to mention uh, provide the database name so in the database reference we are providing the database name uh, sample mariadb which are, we are created uh, to target and the in the upgrade field we are providing the target version uh, we are targeting the version 10.5.8 so uh, if we want to list uh, the version we are supporting in kubedb we just i can show you the supported versions uh, here are the versions we are supporting in kubedb 10.4.17 10.5.8 and the latest version is 10.6.4 so now we are uh, upgrading from 10.4 to 10.5 so let's wait a moment until the version upgrade is completed. So uh, in the obsequious research, we can see that we have a version MD version. Uh, we have a obsequious MD version update. The type is update, and it is still in progressing. Uh, we are doing smart restart uh, where one port get restarted and we get ready with the late, uh, updated version and then the next port proceed to restart. Uh, we are performing the restart one by one. So, still now the cluster is, is, is available. So that means we can read or write data uh, with different versions. Uh, in the, as the port zero is restarted, that means it has the later 10.5 version and the other uh, others are 10.4. Uh, so if we check the version of the, if we check, the version for the port zero we can see that this is the updated version so let's connect to the server uh, here uh, the version is 10.5.8 and two ports get restarted and the third port is in the queue so if we <clears throat> check the cluster size it's still three but when the third port gets started, uh, terminating state, we will get size three, uh, two. Well, our third port is online, but the server is not started yet. It will take some moments. Uh, the off request is successful. That means uh, our cluster is ready. When the cluster is ready with all the nodes, then it will show the off request successful. And the, our database is also ready with the new version. That means we have successfully updated to the version, MariaDB version 10.5.8. So there's the version update. Now I will demonstrate the off request. Uh, upscaling uh, so i'm going to apply the upscale yaml upscale ops request and take a look at the upscale ops request yaml so this is the upscale ops request uh, here the kind is mariadb ops request provided by kubedb kubedb api version uh, we have provided the name and namespace in metadata uh, the ops request type is horizontal scaling 
uh, we also provide the database reference and in horizontal scaling we provided the member value five that means we are expecting a five members cluster so if we check the ports we already had three ports and the fourth port is joining the cluster so if we check the cluster size You can see that the cluster size is four. And the fifth pod is online. The fifth pod is initializing. So whenever the server is ready, it will show the cluster size five. And the horizontal upscaling ops request is in progressing state. And database is in critical because all the nodes, all the ports are not, all the nodes are not ready yet. So uh, the horizontal scaling of triggers is successful and the, our database is also ready. So let's check the cluster size. Uh, this is five. And if we check the, check the data, we can see the data is also safe. So in the next, uh, I'm going to apply downscale of request. That means we want to downscale the nodes to three. We already have five, but we want to downscale it to three. So I'm um, applying the downscale ops request and we want to look at the downscale ops request camel. So this is the downscale ops request, same as upscale, just we are providing the member value three. So it will create a cluster, it will downscale the cluster to member three. So how downscale is working, uh, it is just removing uh, nodes one by one from the bottom. Uh, so the fifth pod is terminating. Whenever it's terminated properly, then it will start terminating the fourth pod. So let's check the cluster size. It was five and now it's four. Whenever we get a cluster of size three and all nodes are ready, then the ops request will be in successful status and the database also will be in ready status. Well, uh, our downscale of request is successful. So if you check the cluster size, uh, we are seeing three as we expected in the downscale of request and the database also in ready status. So now I want to show the certificates we are using here. So we are using three certificates and using uh, reconfigured TLS of request and I want to upgrade the server search. Uh, so I'm going to deploy upgrade of secrets. Before that, I want to show you the YAML file of the certificate of secrets. Uh, here you, you can see, we don't have any email address in our of request, uh, sorry, in our certificate server search. So I would like to add an email address and some other informations. So I'm going to apply the reconfigured TLS of request update and then I will show you what's inside this YAML file you can get TLS. So this is the reconfigured TLS update of request. Here uh, we have provided the request type and the database reference and in the TLS section we provided the alias of the certificate 
So the alias of the certificate is server. That means we are updating the server set where we have added the subject organization value and the DNS, which is localhost. And at the last, we have added the email address, the email address, alifatscript.com. So after the obstetric is completed, we would like to check if the uh, check if it is updated or not. And I want I also want to show you that we are using these certificates in our object uh, in, in the ports. So if we get one of these ports, uh, we can show that here. This is the TLS server config and this is the secret. Uh, these secrets are provided by the certificate. So if we update the certificate, it will reflect here in the server. And I can also show you the TLS configuration fields here. Uh, these are the variables we are using for configuring the MyADB server. So it's all set here. Now we are upgrading of this field. So like previous, uh, when we are performing an ops request, uh, in, it will upgrade one It will upgrade one by one in ports. So the first port get restarted and the second port get restarted and the changes and the, also it's going to restart the third port. When uh, the success is successful, we'll check the certificates. Well, uh, our reconfigured TLS obstacles is successful and let's check if the changes are here or not. Uh, we can see that uh, we have the email address that we have provided in the ops request and also the subject organization value. So we can say that uh, the ops request update is successful. And after that, I would like to show you how to take backup of MariaDB database using stash in KubeDB. So before that, I would like to show the task uh, add-ons we are using, uh, stash add-ons we are using for uh, backup or restore MariaDB. So if we get the tasks, we we'll, we can I can show you that uh, the, there is two add-ons. Uh, one is MariaDB backup, and other is restore. So we also check the app binding object. This app binding object provides the required information to stars to connect to the database, to uh, push the data into the database in recovery or take data from the database in list uh, backup. So our app binding is also here with the same name of database. Now we are going to create a secret that will uh, provide the access credential of the backend or repository. Uh, I will show you what, what repository we are using, what backend, but before that, I will going to create the secret here. So in this secret, we are using REST password, Google project ID, and Google service account JSON key. As we are using GCS, so we are providing the credentials for uh, GCS. So the secret name will be GCS secret. So let's create the secret and the secret is created. Now I'm going to deploy the repository. So the uh, repository is applying and let's check what's inside the repository YAML. 
this is the repository yaml uh, this is uh, happy version is provided by stash and the uh, kind is repository uh, in metadata we have name and namespace so in the back end uh, we are using gcs so we provide provided the gcs and uh, the back end name is stash testing and the prefix that means the directory of the back end where we are going to back up the data is demo that is our namespace mariadb the mariadb data and the database name and the storage secret name is gcs secret that we have created a few moment ago so i can show you the gcs backend we are using so uh, this is the gcs backend uh, here the mariadb folder is empty that means uh, no database has backed up yet so we will take a backup so let's check if the repository is created successfully or not okay uh, the repository has created but then there is no snapshot because we have not started any backup session yet so let's create a backup configuration so i'm going to apply a backup configuration and i will also watch the some values backup configuration Backup session. Okay, let's uh, we have. Uh, apply the backup configuration let's take a look what's inside the backup configuration yaml uh, so this is the backup configuration yaml uh, we are using api version stash v1 beta 1 the kind is backup configuration and we have provided the metadata in the spec section we can see the schedule is five minutes that means uh, at each five minutes it will take a backup or it will create a backup session and the repository we are using is gcs repo that we have created and uh, in the tar the target is we are using uh, a reference of where the reference is not the database name or this is the app binding and the app binding name so we are using app binding to communicate with the database and in the retention policy we said that we want to keep the last five so that's the information about backup configuration and let's check if any backup has started yet so we can see that uh, we have no backup but uh, it will take it at each five minutes so i can trigger a manual backup session so i'm going to apply a manual trigger a manual backup so a backup session is created and i can wait for a while to this backup session get succeeded If I exit into pod and check the data, you can see that the database is still in. Yes, we have still two columns and it will be backed up into our repository and uh, the backup session is succeeded. So let's check the backup backed up data into the bucket, GCS bucket. So this is our GCS bucket. It has no data, but if I refresh this section, I can see uh, the sample MariaDB backup is in this bucket and it has created just now. So our data is backed up in GCS secret using stash in KipDB. So now we are going to simulate a disaster case. That means uh, we are going to delete our data and try to restore those data 
so I'm going to delete some data so before deleting that I want to pause the backup sessions so that uh, the uh, backup configuration cannot take uh, backup of corrupted data so I'm going to pause the backup session so I'm going I'm catching the backup configuration to pause is equal true so here you can see the poll database is paused pause value is true now I'm going to exit into the port and connect to the server and delete the table we have created or delete the whole database so let us show this here the database here we have the company database and we are going to delete this company database so if we check the database we have no database name company now i'm going to apply the restore session so just apply the restore session and i'll show you the yaml what's inside the restore session uh, in the restore session we are mentioning the repository name that's that is gcs repo and we are providing the target app binding so this app binding points to the database so it will take data from the repository and dump it to the database which points pointed by the app binding and in the rules we are providing the snapshot latest uh, as you can as you have checked earlier in the backup configuration we took the snapshot of uh, we saved the snapshot of latest uh, last five and we are going to take the backup of latest uh, if we want to take the backup of, of not the latest or two or three the snapshots before we also can take this using this feature so Unfortunately, the Mr. Session failed. Alif, can you, uh, there is a, uh, there is a rule binding for this register session. Can you get this? Uh, I am yes, thinking uh, your previous session was not clean up properly. Get rule binding. Uh, get rule binding. Rule binding. Uh, let's demo. Yes, maybe uh, that session. Uh, okay, uh, not this one. This, this uh, one. No, not this one. Uh, can you describe this uh, register session? Uh, you will see the rule binding in there. Okay, there is a go to the event section go to the event section yeah uh, uh, do you see the rule binding name apps code license trigger demo 
uh, uh, yes in the first line yes cluster rule binding yes uh, delete this cluster rule binding apps code license reserve don't copy this one copy the letter sentence yes this one yeah delete this one It's a cluster rule when you uh, delete the registration and drag. Uh, the uh, thank you, Imus, uh, for helping the situation. Actually, what was happening here, uh, his PB, uh, this uh, cluster rule binding was not clean, uh, clean up properly in his previous run. So uh, that's why uh, when he's trying again to register, it's causing the problem. Okay, uh, so let's check if the database is restored perfectly or not. So I have exact into the database and connect to the server and show show databases so we can see the company database and if we check the tables of the company database that is employee table uh, we have the previous rows here so our data is successfully restored and this is the backup and recovery section and the carbon recovery using stash in a QDB, MariaDB. So that's the live demo. And now, if you want to install QDB, uh, you can use this Helm, Helm command and you can get the details in this link given below. This is the this is link of our docs uh, of QDB, MariaDB. And now it's question and answer session. If anybody have any question, feel free to ask. Yeah, so uh, hey, yeah, this is Tomal here. Uh, so uh, there was already uh, quite a few questions in the Zoom chat. Uh, we uh, kind of answered those, but I guess I'll uh, kind of go over those again, uh, just for those who are following on the live stream maybe. So uh, one question was why the status was critical uh, when the update operations or the ops request were running. Uh, so what the uh, status critical means is that uh, one of the database pods, at least one of the database pods uh, is not either not running or not accepting connections at that point. So when you are doing the upgrade process, we shut down it for restart it and then it has to connect back to the cluster. So during that phase, the upgrade, uh, the database, uh, the status of the custom resource for the MariaDB object will go to critical. So it kind of indicates that something is not 100% right. Uh, so when all the pods are running, all the pods are accepting connection, it is going to be ready. When database is not able to read or write, it is going to be not ready. But then in the critical phase, something is not uh, ready, but the database is available for read or write. So you'll be able to actually continue to write your operation, which is indicated that to make sure that, you know, if you're a DBA or a database uh, and a user, you kind of know that there's something to check for. Uh, then there's the question about, uh, what about the, the, about the upgrade operation? Like does the WS rep API version, uh, does it have to be same for upgrade? I think what we are doing here is like, you know, as long as the MariaDB itself supports going from one version to another, right? So like MariaDB 10.4 and 10.5, those have the same uh, WS rep, but then if you're coming from 10.3, then it's a, a lower version of the WS rep API in the Galera cluster. So uh, so you have to kind of go step by step, right? You kind of make a big jump. So as long as you go from 10.3 to 10.4, uh, that kind of upgrades will work. So, so we're kind of looking at, you know, as long as MariaDB officially supports it, it, it is supported here. Uh, there's a question about 
uh, if the uh, company employees table was sharded, in this case, well, we didn't shard it, but you know, you know, QDB is just provisioning the database for you, managing all those other sort of DBA type of tasks. But like whether you want to shard it or not, all of that, that's uh, really up to you. You can kind of shard it, you know, uh, as you do for uh, any uh, MariaDB scenario. Um, there's a question about, can you use the ops request to rotate that client server SART? The answer is yes. So you can actually add, and if you, you started without SARTs, you can add SART. If you started with SART, but decide to remove them, that you can do. But if you are already using SARTs and you want to rotate basically, you know, like expiration, or maybe you want to add, I don't know, like new, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the CN, in the, you know, or any of the distinguished name fails, you can do those things, right? Or just to rotate them for expiration. So you don't want to do those. Uh, and then uh, does Stash support AWS S3? So yes, so Stash supports all the, you know, sort of the standard object stories, right? So in S3, anything that is S3 compatible, so MinIO, uh, RookSeph, and if you have like a NetApp appliance or things like that, those are supported. Obviously Google Cloud Storage, we used here, uh, Azure uh, storage. So if you are using on uh, Microsoft Cloud, uh, you uh, Azure Cloud, uh, Azure, so you'll be able to use that. Uh, OpenStack Swift, if you are running Kubernetes on OpenStack or have OpenStack uh, kind of for your data storage. Uh, and then uh, any kind of NFS mount. So, you know, and that kind of opens up possibility for any kind of, uh, you know, uh, solution you may have. Uh, and then there is a question about uh, how does the stash runs this uh, backup process? So the backup process is run, so uh, based on the, you saw the backup configuration that has a cron expression. So that will create a cron job. And then the cron job will ultimately at that schedule will trigger a Kubernetes job that uses uh, MariaDB, Maria backup tool. And then, you know, the, it takes a logical backup of the whole application and then uh, we did it uh, with the data that's uh, already stored in the previous backups. So, and encrypts that backup uh, using a password in the uh, rest it has. So every backup that is stored in the object store is actually individually encrypted uh, for each database uh, and then uploaded to the storage. So this is all kind of happening transparently behind the scene. And then when the restore happens, it's you know, kind of does the opposite process. Um, yeah, so, and, and, and when you restore, you can, you know, you can restore into the same cluster, you can restore to the different cluster, you can restore into the different images of the cluster. So you can actually, because it's a, uh, upload, uploaded uh, using as a uh, restrict uh, backup, so Stash has a CLI that you can use to effectively download the, you know, the output of the Maria backup command as just a text file on your local machine and then, uh, you know, uh, use that, like if you want to, you know, spin up some local server or something to test things. So that was about it. Um, and then the, uh, if, there, if you have any other question, uh, we are happy to answer. We have, uh, I think, uh, five, six minutes now, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, you can uh, unmute, you should be able to unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, yeah. Hi, Chaman. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for great presentation and demo. Uh, so my question is around the patch management. So how the patch management is gonna work here? You know, this is uh, one of the things I, I really like about this kind of like a pass provider that they do all this patch management by, let's say, you know, it's easy way, right? So you don't yeah. know what database is gonna get the patch. Yeah. Uh, so when you're talking about patch management, you're talking about that uh, patch patch upgrades, right? Like how that will work. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, Ali, if you could share your screen. I mean, so uh, when I think you saw at one point, we have this, uh, so we maintain a catalog uh, it's a, a cube, we call it a kubedb catalog chart, and that has like the um, supported MariaDB version. So basically when a new version of MariaDB comes out, we uh, add support for that in that catalog. And, and then from there, you know, all you really need to do, create that upgrade operation uh, command, 
to kind of trigger that uh, up, uh, update when the update should happen. Uh, so currently, you know, all our ops requests uh, are sort of, I would say, manually triggered. But then after that, every all the steps are automated. But we are kind of also working on a process where, you know, you can set up a policy like, hey, uh, you know, just uh, when there is a new version, uh, you know, with, with a DBA admin approval, like it will just run those upgrades automatically at some point in time in the day or night or something. So that's that's some, something we are kind of looking to do uh, going forward. But uh, today, you know, it, it, they, we provide all the support, but then you kind of have to uh, trigger it yourself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, anybody else uh, have any question? We're happy to answer here. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, just uh, so you know, uh, we have uh, all these uh, uh, sort of steps are documented on our uh, uh, website, qtb.com. So uh, you can uh, go there and you'll be able to kind of, uh, we already shared a link to the quick start guide so you can kind of follow the steps, but then also the YAMLs that has been used in this demo will be shared um, uh, on our QDB uh, GitHub org. So uh, yeah, you will have all the YAMLs and you'll be able to follow it. We'll actually send out a kind of email uh, once uh, we, the session is over, maybe in a few days with the, you know, the recording and all that. So you'll be able to, you know, if you want to share with the rest of your team or something, you'll be able to kind of follow along yourself also. Okay, so before concluding, I would like to add that our next webinar will be on Redis in two weeks. So I uh, would really love to see you guys there. We hope you can make it there. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Hope to see you next time. Um, bye. Hi, thank you.